But remember, this is a metaphor. This is not a literal. So the literal he's trying to talk about is our relationship, and he's using this as a way to picture it. He says, stay in me. So in the context of what he's talking about here, what's the me? The true vine. The covenantal relationship that was, he said, because of the word which I have spoken to you. I spoke to you covenantal discipleship language words. I gave you relational information of where you needed to be in understanding your relationship with your heavenly father, with Messiah, and with each other. Stay in me and I in you. Now, this is the same as everything that Yahweh says in other places and Messiah says in other places. He says, he says that it's a relationship. If you guard, keep, obey, submit to my instructions, I will take you as my treasured possession and take care of all your other stuff. We see things like that, okay? So he says here, look, we, have, we also see things like where it says, draw near to Elohim and he will draw near to you. There's lots of this imagery in the relationship. So he says, look, if you stay in me, I'll stay in you. If you don't, I don't. Same, like, same thing like in the model prayer. If you don't forgive others their trespasses, I'm not going to forgive yours. Okay? It's a relationship. Now, bear in mind the way this relationship works. The inspirational part comes from above. The response then comes from the below. Then the relationship synergizes with the above. If the below moves, then the above is not there anymore. Okay? So yes, he starts it by sparking you to ask, seek, knock. So you, he sparks it at a distance. You now seek and look and draw near to him to join yourself to him. He then comes and stays in you. If you leave, he leaves. Are we clear? Okay? Because I don't want it to make it sound like somehow you initiate this stuff. You don't. The above is going to poke your bubble, your delusion bubble, wake you up, put a hole in it so you start to see things correctly, accurately, in reality. Then you, when you start to see, your eyes open, ears open, your heart open, you seek, you ask, you're searching for. So you're looking to draw near to him, but you don't know how. So then he gives you a little bit of more from the above to give you things that'll help you find him. Next thing you know, he leads you to a place where you're hearing the word from Messiah, which what does that do? It cleans you up. He says you're gonna be clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. That then brings you to a place where you covenant. And when you covenant, you're now coming together in somewhat of an echadness with your creator. This is the phraseology that Yeshua is going to be using here in 15. He's going to use it again in John 17. If we go there, we talked about I in you and you in me. Oh, Father, I want them to be one as we are one. But remember the relationship. You have total freedom to exit the relationship. So this is the encouragement. Yeshua is about to go. He knows they're going to be shaken to the core when he dies. It's going to be the worst three days of their existence till they find out that he's not dead, that, he has that he's risen. And he's trying to tell them that you need to understand. You need to stay in me. Doesn't matter how hard the wind blows and the storm comes and everything else, hang on, cling, cleave, hold fast, stay in me. Now bear in mind, he would never have to say this for all the once saved, always saved people if there was no way to exit. Why would he have to tell you to stay if you couldn't leave? If you're just in and saved forever. Listen to the teaching, are you saved? Understand it unfiltered from all the junk you were given for the whole life that you lived in the church. Yeshua would not be wasting his breath saying something like the guy said to me, the Baptist preacher, when he said that the backslider, if he dies in his backsliding, still gets in. 
Well, backsliding means he didn't stay in me. <laughs> By any definition, even Baptist definitions. <laughs> 